Look, this is where I usually come for a, a little moment alone, really, uh, in this remote place. But perhaps we can pass a little time together. You can join me in my secret garden. <laughs> you know, every time I come here, I'm, I'm reminded of how beautiful and free nature is, how innocent and chaste and I'm reminded of when I was a little girl, so full of dreams. And I find myself wondering, what might my life have been like had those dreams come true, even one? If I hadn't found myself trapped here in this purgatory, in this perverse gilded cage, a disease-ridden, circus ape dancing before the slack jaws of a plebeian mob. <laughs> Honey, you have the best seat in the house. <laughs> now I'm going to tell the same thing to those people over there, but I'm not lying to you. <laughs> well, this is one of my favorite episodes every year because this is the episode where we welcome that wonderful, wonderful time of spring. As you probably know, Spring is my favorite time of year. <sighs> ah, the fertile pollination, burgeoning, blossoming, bludgeoning flow of new life, the crocuses, the daffodils, marigolds, the magnolia blossoms, brunch time flatulence, the sweet, gentle caresses of the suckling breeze, little nests of baby rats, bunnies, rabbits. I mentioned crocuses, and of course, new love. It wouldn't be spring without it. And I just hope that all of you nice young people get the opportunity to experience the wonders of falling in love in the springtime. It's just a rich when you will love, when you would carry me, orchids floating in the breeze. <laughs> l'amour, l'amour, toujours l'amour. Oh. It's French for love. <laughs> oh, I've known it. It might be hard to believe, but I've known it well, my dears. And just as the flowers pound their way up through the earth, so do we human beings engage in our sexual frottage. So rubbing and clutching, the eventual penetration straight to the soul. I just hope you get to experience it. You know. Perhaps even tonight, some of you might fall in love. You might find yourself having certain urges to tenderly stroke and hold one another, to, to touch the other's flesh and to caress their soft, dewy brow. And over time, those feelings may develop into a desire to stroke harder, and the caress may become more of a claw in gesture, and then up towards the throat, perhaps, and a harder, more compressed energy until gradually life is extinguished and love is dead. Circle of life, love and hate, love and hate, bringing us through to the fruitful disenchantment of summer and the inevitability of death. Well, there certainly are some attractive people in the audience here tonight. Is anyone here going together? Anyone, any, any young marrieds? That's my favorite. Any, no dates in the audience? Well, that's too bad. I hope we can fix that later. What about you two? Why not? Sure. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? You, young man. <laughs> Isn't that an attractive woman? What do you do? Uh, I'm a filmmaker. But what do you really do? <laughs> Good point. And, and you, you, you young lady, what is your line of work? I'm a student. 
uh, aren't you a little, um, <laughs> a higher level education, or are you are you an uh, adult undergraduate? <laughs> I've been adult undergraduate. <laughs> well, sounds like the two of you should see greener pastures. I, I was wrong. Ah, well, it's a wonderfully intimate space. I can really, I can really smell how excited you all are to be here. <laughs> I must be allergic to your dander. <laughs> no. In fact, it's a seasonal affliction. Perhaps you've heard of it. Allergies. Yes. Allergies is a sickness that affects hundreds, if not thousands, of Americans every year. <laughs> you know, I, I love my plants, as you've probably heard me talk about on, on this program in the past. I, I have a real green thumb, finger, forefinger, it all goes in. I just, I've had, I think, more positive experience with plants than I have with people. Some of my best friends are plants. Some of my most poignant sexual experiences have been with plants. And I just can't deny, though, that this time of year, those little devils can really cause a ruckus. Now, you may think that allergies are simply an inconvenience, but they can be deadly. Yes, just last week, a gentleman was driving home from work in New Jersey, and he was sneezing so hard that he drove his car into opposing traffic and was killed on impact with a school bus, which then rolled into a river. But don't worry, most of the older children could swim. <laughs> it's a dark story, but we live in dark times. Some people are very, very cynical these days, in fact. They, they think that politics is, is, a, is, is a sham, and, and they're, they're not even excited about the next election, which I always find so festive. You know, people say that, that these days we, only, we can only choose between the norm. There is no choice anymore. In the next election, we have to choose between two bushes. And who wants that? And just to be clear, when I say two bushes, I mean Jeb Bush, the probable Republican candidate, and um, Hillary Clinton, the probable Democratic candidate's pubic hair. Her, her pubic hair. Who wrote this? <laughs> this is outrageous. I, I, give me their name. They are, they are losing their internship tonight. I, I am a professional woman. And I am outraged at the way that. That, that, that women's bodies are, are, are used in order to, to undermine their professional standing. I think it's outrageous. And, and I think also it's inaccurate, because if you know anything about our Secretary of State, you know that she prefers a scorched earth policy. <laughs> uh, I can kid, I can kid, because I can make the same jokes about myself, you know. I, uh, for instance, will readily admit I haven't tended my own lady garden in quite some time. Happy to get involved in that which grows from the earth, but not that which grows from my body. But it doesn't really matter, because no one's really interested anymore. Don't feel sorry for me. It's, it is difficult being a divorcee at my age, but... Uh, and men are very intimidated by me. They, they, they know how successful I am, and I'm very beautiful, and... Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think it's intimidating, and it doesn't really matter whether or not I get the sexual attention, because uh, I have lost all vaginal elasticity, you see. It's just stretched out rubber bands down there, so I couldn't even be able to feel it, really. <sighs> the majestic womb giveth and taketh away. I tell you. Uh, mine giveth me, actually, some wonderful gifts. Hello, dear. The only flesh and blood relative I have in this life was giveth to me by my womb. And, well, besides my brother, uh, unfortunate Eugene. Eugene, but he doesn't quite count because he only has one eye and many teeth problems and he has to live in Norway because he's on a no-fly list because of some internet stuff he did. <laughs> Poor Eugene. No, we'll move on to a slightly less sad story, uh, which is that I am very pleased to welcome back my dear little darling, very troubled uh, daughter, Macy, who is with us tonight. And uh, as you've probably heard, she's had a very rough time of it, but she's trying her best. And I think that's all we can ask of anyone. She's never going to be, you know, measuring up to maybe what we would want. But I think that we should still give her a warm round of applause. Macy. Is she in the green room by herself? 
Is she with that guy Julio? <laughs> if she comes on the stage, I'll crank it up, I swear to God. Go get her. She'll just be a moment. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sure you've heard about her various uh, exploits in the tabloids. Um, but she really is doing better. Uh, she, besides the usual DUI and drug addiction issues, uh, she had uh, that problem with outbursts of physical violence that was quite notable, uh, especially towards that nice Jewish girl. What was her name? Uh, Natalie Portman, such a nice girl. And they just used to get into the most terrific scuffles. It was really something. I, I, they used to be such good friends. But uh, of course, that was before the surgery. And Macy had, oh, there she is. Nice. Oh, this is so special. Is that what you're wearing? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Well, you definitely look better than you used to. Doesn't she, ladies and gentlemen? Let's give her a round of applause. Much better than before. Thanks, Mom. Much better than before. So I'm just so happy to have you here. You just used to, you've lost so much weight. Not naturally, of course, but uh, it was it was very expensive. But I, I still think that you're a wonderful role model for all those young Americans out there who struggle with obesity and have very wealthy parents to pay for the surgery to make them look like normal people. I just think it's wonderful. And uh, not only do you look like a normal person, but you are now an entrepreneur, which I'm very <laughs> excited about. So please, I'm sure we're all dying to see what Macy has for us today, so please share. Thanks, Mom. Um, yes, I do. I'm, very, I'm so excited about this new um, company that I've started. It's, mm -hmm. um, Show us. It's a line of uh, organic um, boutique nail polish. Honey, those look a little dirtier. Those the no, no, no. That's just that's part of the packaging. Oh. It's meant to be um, oh, I see. That, that's cultural. Right. It's like expensive mm -hmm. but um, approachable, <laughs> and it's actually <laughs> only available at um, gas stations and airports, luxury gas stations and airports. Luxury gas stations. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, as you can see, they're all they all kind of look like they're like from someone's old. Um, you know, nail polish collection. They do. They really do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they're made out of. Um, they have finger, real fingernail mixed in, so it's not <laughs> as um, rough on your own fingernails. So that's that was something that I came up with and thought about the science behind. So mm. I quite like this color. I think I would wear that. Yeah, I mean, this one would look great on you. Thank you. You know, yeah, especially with really you know nice. your jewelry. And yes, stuff. thank you. Oh, I, I always think of, I always think one. about you. You know, thank and like you. what you would like. What's um, this one? Called. That one is called Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, <laughs> wonderful! Yeah. All right, baby. All right, baby. And so, is, is it his fingernails in the bottle? Or <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's just you know, um, you know, Other old organ yeah. donors. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But this is the this is the color that I like to think that his eyes were when he you know passed. Um, oh, right. When they rolled up and the pinks came off. Right. Right. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I think this is what. Let's give her a round of applause. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you, dear, because even though I'm just so proud of you, you know, because you're my flesh and blood, and for no other reason, I really am. And I, and I just think, even though you have to come out here and hawk this, this, this tawdry, tacky, subpar product and use my show as a platform to try to get some kind of professional foothold, the thing is, I still love you. <laughs> Even though you've humiliated yourself beyond all measure and shamed me in public, I still love you because that's what being a mother is. I mean, and you know, Macy was actually supposed to be triplet, so imagine that. <laughs> she still hasn't told me how she killed the other two. But, uh, she, she probably doesn't remember, do you? Dear? Yes, I, uh, I was pregnant with triplets, and uh, I was eagerly awaiting their arrival, and when the time came, out came two beautiful baby boys, who breathed one big gasp and then just expired by them. Little preemies, little dead boys. <laughs> and then this uh, very large uh, female uh, plopped right out of me. And here we are. <laughs> Thank you for coming, darling. Thank you so much. Good luck, really. Good luck. All right. 
Now we can get on to some grown-up talk, right? <laughs> oh, it is a labor of love, let me tell you. Oh. You pour everything you have into these kids, and that's what happens. You explain it to me. I don't understand. Oh, boy. Well, let's get to know each other a little bit. So we don't have anyone in any couples. So I wonder what's wrong with any of you. <laughs> Has anyone ever uh, been in love? In the audience. How about you? Are you ever? You have a sweet and gentle face, like a little baby deer. <laughs> have you ever been in love? Yeah, I think so. You think so? I think so. What What tipped you off? <laughs> uh, Was it when someone else said it to you, and you just wanted to say the same thing back? Uh, <laughs> That's not, usually how it works. Not well, always. How interesting. <laughs> and, uh, what is it that you do, my dear? Oh, I come to shows. <laughs> and uh, oh, you have a trust fund. Very nice, very nice, excellent. Talk to my agent later. We're always looking for wonderful, exciting young people like yourself. Oh, hello. Hi. Well, I just had to talk to the most handsome man in the room. Oh, wow. And ask you, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because you are in impeccable condition. Um, not too much. Well, really, I mean, at your age, you must be doing something, so please. Okay, I jog. I jog around. Oh, how interesting. And when did you first realize you could run? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <sighs> well, it's just so nice to meet all of you here tonight. I wonder if anyone can tell me who won Best Actress this year, because I missed it. Can anyone tell me? In the Oscars, of course. Two oh. and more. Ah, <gasps> oh, thank you. I was hoping she would win. You know, I want you to have this. I want you to have this ring. Take it. Take it off of my finger. Take it. <laughs> 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 one moment. <I'm laughs> Allergies. <laughs> Basically, uh, and the only way to lift the curse is to get someone to accept the ring willingly. So, <laughs> so, it's just really funny. So you're gonna start to experience some symptoms there. Uh, anyway, um, I'm glad to be to be here. Uh, just Woo! in time for bikini season. Okay. Yeah. And white tee. So excited to be here. So great. And uh, I don't have to worry about it going anywhere because you know the thing with New York is like you just walk so much all the time and you can really stay in shape that way and the thing with walking is like it's such a great exercise because most people really like understand how to do it um, and, and, and they're usually quite good at it but things do sometimes still seem to go awry like you know when you're walking down the street and you're kind of like suddenly walking in the same pace as someone and they're very very close to you like uncomfortably close and your upper arms are kind of brushing like sensuously for about five paces and then you both just get embarrassed and separate. Tender moments in the city. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not as weird as the other thing that happens. Where um, you're walking on the sidewalk and someone's coming in the opposite direction. And you guys make eye contact. And you both just know what's going to happen and you try to deny it to yourself. But what happens is you make eye contact and then you just continue walking. And you just walk right 
into each other, maintaining eye contact the entire time. And like everywhere you step, they step. And every time you try to escape, you can't. And then eventually you're just right here and you just say, sorry, and dart away. Has that ever happened to you where you like make eye contact and you just walk right into this person? It's, <laughs> it's so weird. I have no idea where, what that's from, but I like to think that it, there's some kind of mysterious reason. Uh, I, I'm kind of always wishing that the world could be a little more magical. I, I like to have like an open mind about the possibility of just entering a, 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 a magical adventure. And I like to give that to other people too. So lately when that's been happening, when I walk right into someone, I've been whispering things to sort of excite their imagination. Like, uh, like she forgives you. Because <laughs> you know, who knows what's going on in their life, you know? Maybe it's, I'd say like, room number 17, under the bed. You know, and I like to think that maybe they really needed that, you know, uh, so, like, and then I just vanish into the crowd like a Morgan Freeman. Uh, and they'll say like, you know, it's always been Switzerland. And it's oh, I just got out of a relationship. I'm really vulnerable. And that one's for like if I feel like there's like a special spark or something, and you know, uh, and I, then I see if they chase me. Um, and, and sometimes uh, that's how I have gone on some really nice dates. Met some nice folks that way. Um, usually, not a second date. Um, but you know, that's that's kind of how things have been going for me for a while. Like I just uh, you know haven't been having much luck uh, romantically. Uh, my friends try to set me up on blind dates, and, and, and it just doesn't really ever seem to work out. I don't really know why. Uh, I do my best to make myself appealing. Um, uh, I'm a good listener, I think. Uh, but I don't know. I have a very bad history with blind dates. It's just a real like swing and a miss most of the time. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't want you guys to think that I'm not a passionate lover, because I am, okay? I, like, I think that sex between two people can be a beautiful spiritual thing, okay? And once you guys get into like the real intimacy, luring prepubescent boys down to your basement and castrating them together, you can just, you can really hit that spiritual thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know what it is. I guess I'm just sexually confused, you know, I, uh, the best thing I can really think of to describe myself as would be bisexual, you know? But uh, you know, buy me something, I get really sexual. <laughs> you know, guys, I mean, you know what it means when a girl like me says she's bisexual. We know what that means, right? It's like, buy me a drink and, like, dare me, and I'll totally make out with your girlfriend. <laughs> and, like, if you buy me a few drinks and you double doggy dare me, <laughs> I'll move in with her, get a rescue dog, and get a restraining order on you. <laughs> So that's, that's what that is. No, but I mean, I will say something for men. Um, that's just undeniable. They do have penises. And uh, they're not liable to let you forget it either. They're constantly like taking pictures of them and being like, eh, eh. it's like, yes, it's still there. It's still there. Just as, just as before. <laughs> Hasn't gone anywhere. I, I sometimes want to, when I get those kind of text messages, dick pics, I want to text back and just be like, Sir, that is a perfectly normal growth. There's nothing to worry about. Just keep applying the cream I prescribed you every night and make a follow-up appointment for three months from now. If anything changes, call us. Nothing to worry about. Just a completely average, normal development. Uh, yeah, well, you know. I mean, I, I really think that I understand in a way because if I had external genitalia, I think I'd be excited about seeing it in different lighting and posing it in different locations, putting it next to things as, as they do. Um, and uh, it, it, is, it is a very different organ. I, I know from, from going down on women, you know, you just you really have to commit. You have to be, just really get involved, get interested, uh, start, start organizing um, in your community and just <laughs> deal with that whole situation here. And um, with men, you just have to suppress the urge to do all the things you would ordinarily do with your mouth. Um, right? I mean, that's something that I feel like we're not talking about. Like, there's every kind of fetish 
available is is in pornography nowadays. Uh, you know anything you can think of, but the, the most obvious thing to me is never getting uh, any playtime, which is penises getting bitten off during blowjobs. Right? I mean, is nobody else thinking about this? It seems to me um, that. I mean, that's where the teeth are, right? Is nobody like, is this not occurring anymore? I think it's pretty obvious. Like, if I had a penis, you know, these, these men are always like coercing women and, and like trying to force them to give them blowjobs and like holding their heads down and stuff. And it's kind of like, if I was going to uh, put my penis between someone's incisors and, uh, you know, we're the strongest, oh, hello. <laughs> and uh, you know where the strongest muscle in the body is located uh, I would want to make sure that they weren't just willing to do it but that they were excited and dedicated to the whole operation and that they supported me and didn't have any lingering resentment uh, yeah I don't understand this must be a paranoia for people I mean people are like terrified of ISIS halfway around the world, but they're offering their genitals to the terrorist at home. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy stuff. <sighs> but you guys must be having lots of oral sex. A healthy young bunch. You know, confident. <laughs> when you do get into a relationship, it'll be very exciting first, and then it'll become very, very boring for you. And when that happens, I, I, I want to tell you uh, what my mother told me, I know it's such a cliche, I better give me advice, but ah, it, it turned out to be completely true, you know, she, I called her, I was in this long-term relationship, and the spark had gone out, and uh, I was complaining to her, and she was like, you know, honey, this is completely normal, and this is what I did, and, and she should know, you know, I mean, she and my father have been together for like 30 years, uh, minus the two years when she caught him fucking the family dentist and moved into her own apartment. And I just aspire to that degree of complacency and passivity, you know, which is really great. And anyway, so she said, you know what you do? It's just this little trick that I can teach you that is like, you just go somewhere you guys have never been before, and you wear something he's never seen you in before, and you just pretend you're meeting for the first time, and you realize you can fall in love all over again, and you just have a nice evening, you know? And then, then you go home, and in the meantime, you've bought the biggest, blackest strap on you can find, and then you just bend him over and you make him your little bitch. And it just brings the spark back. So that's, that's my tip. That's my tip. You guys, you know? I hope no one here is thinking about reproducing, because that's just irresponsible, unless you're thinking about raising a child who doesn't need water. Um, I personally am taking the pill. I did end up... Uh, getting pregnant at one point, uh, a little bit of a scare there, because it turns out I was putting it in the wrong way, but it seems obvious to me that that's where it is. <laughs> um, and I have to admit, I like to joke, but it was a really serious moment for me when I had to decide, do I keep it, you know? Because that's a little life you might bring into the world, and that's like a really serious prospect, you know, that person will be with you forever. So it's really just a decision um, that has to happen between you and the flight of stairs. Whichever one you choose. It's a good joke. Good for you guys. Don't give in. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of fun humor to be had around the reproductive organs, I have to say. I think that they're very funny little baubles. And, and I think that's so much of what comedy has become, but there are still some taboo topics like the period. You know, whenever I have my period, I get so excited because it's like I'm carrying a bomb and all I have to do is like whisper to like any male, like, I have it right now. And they're like, ah. <laughs> terrified. <laughs> I was like fucking this lawyer for the first time and he, um, I got my period the first time we had sex and he freaked out and ran to the bathroom and was like washing himself. It's like hysterical. And, uh, it was only my third period ever, but even then I was like, oh, come on, dude, you're so lame. No, you guys, I got it really late. All the other girls in third grade had it for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Maestro. Yeah. It's about the time she walked away from me. Nobody loves you when you're 23. And you still act like you're in the 
freshman year. What the hell is ADD? My friends say I should act my age. What's my age again? What's my age again? <laughs> 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 Later on, on the drive home, I called her mom from a payphone. I said, just for yourself, what spring has come to hell. The birds are laughing in the breeze. That's about the time she ran away with me. Nobody loves you when you're 23 With many years I had to fall in love Why would you wish that on me? I never want to act my age What's my age again? What's my age again?